Hey guys, Alex here with Red Hot MTG, and the deck tech that I got for you today is on Volo Guide to Monsters. Volo is a 3-2 human wizard for 2, green, and blue, with the ability that whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control or a creature in your graveyard, copy that spell. So, Volo is a very interesting commander that cares about you casting creature spells, but has an anti-tribal theme because to get the most out of his effect, the creatures in your deck need to be almost all different types. It was very interesting to build because you want to use creatures with strong abilities to double up, but a lot of the most commonly played creatures that fit that bill in these colors tend to share a creature type, especially human and wizard, which you won't be able to use with Volo because those are his creature types. So it was really fun to look through Magic's history and try and find good effects on creatures with a bunch of unique creature types. So with all that being said, let's jump into the first category of cards. The first category that all commander decks need to perform consistently well is card draw. So, I look to mainly focus on creatures that could draw us cards so that when Volo is out, we can double up on these effects. So first up, we have Elvish Visionary and Fibblethip the Lost, both of which draw us a card when they enter the battlefield. Now, elves are probably the most played creature type in green and many have very powerful abilities. So, there are more than one in this deck, but I tried to keep the number as low as possible and these were typically the creatures I was looking for unique replacements for. Next up, we have Ice Fan Codal, Wall of Blossoms, and Mole Drifter, each of which draws cards and Mole Drifter draws us two when they enter the battlefield. It should be noted that to get the most utility out of Ice Fan Codal, you should run all Snow Basics for your lands so it can gain that Death Touch ability. But I still think it's very powerful with Flash and replacing itself even if you don't want to go that route. Then we have Coiling Oracle, Land War Visionary, and Uro Titan of Wrath. Coiling Oracle lets us draw or ramp if the top card of our library is a land. This is another creature I've been considering replacing because it has three creature types, one of which is being the very relevant of Elf, as I mentioned earlier. I found that this deck really wants creatures with as few creature types as possible to maximize the chances of you also being able to double it up. Land War Visionary draws us a card and acts as a mana dork. And then Uro draws us a card, lets us put a land into play, and then gains us 3 life when it ETBs and attacks. This is a legendary, so we won't get to keep the extra token, but the card is just so powerful that getting an extra activation is worth it. It also has the added utility of being able to exile creature cards from our graveyard with its escape cost if they happen to share types with creatures we want to play. Next up, we have Beast Whisperer and Loyal Drake, which are more consistent by letting us draw whenever we cast a creature spell or during each of our combats if we control Volo, respectively. Then we have Curiosity Crafter, Warren Frostfang, and Toski Bearer of Secrets, all of which let us draw during combat, and as a creature-focused deck, one of our main win conditions will be through combat. Next, we have Runic Armasar, Vizier of the Menagerie, and Vivian Monsters Advocate. Activated abilities are very prevalent in our format, so Runic Armasar should get us at least one card during a game, and more if he's allowed to stay alive and has a companion out due to Volo. Then Vizier and Vivian give us card advantage by letting us look at and play creatures off the top of our library. Now we have some non-creature spells that let us draw, and starting out we have Guardian Project, which lets us draw for every non-token creature that enters the battlefield. And finally, we have Rishkar's Expertise and Return of the Wildspeaker, both of which let us draw cards equal to the greatest power among our creatures. Rishkar's Expertise also lets us cast a 5 CMC or less spell from our hand for free, which can provide us with a good amount of value for a 6 mana spell. And then Return of the Wildspeaker can also be used as a finisher to give all of our non-human creatures plus 3 plus 3 until the end of turn at instant speed. The second category every commander deck needs to perform consistently is ramp. So to start this category off, we have two mana dorks with Birds of Paradise and Tangled Florahedron, which also has the utility of being played as a land if we need it. Then we have Sakura Tribe Elder and Dawn Treader Elk, both of which you can sacrifice to search your library for a basic land and put it into play. Next up, we have Solemn Simulacrum and Avatar of Growth. Solemn Simulacrum lets you get a land when it comes into play and then draws you a card when it dies. Avatar of Growth lets every player search their library for two basics and put them into play. 
Some people might not like this symmetrical effect as it helps all of our opponents. So if you're going for a more competitive build, this might be one of the creatures you could consider replacing. But we are a big mana format and I personally think games are more fun when everyone's deck has the mana to do what it wants to. So I have no problems running a group hug card like this that will ramp everyone by 4 lands if Volo is out. Next up we have Dryad of Elysian Grove and Seaborn Muse. Dryad lets us play additional lands during our turns and they can tap for any color. Seedborn Muse is a very powerful green creature that lets us untap all of our permanents during each of our players upkeep. Then we have Lotus Cobra and Cloud of Fairies. Lotus Cobra gives us a mana every time we play a land and Cloud of Fairies lets us untap two lands when it enters the battlefield. There are other creatures that have similar effects to this if you want to add them as well because with Volo out this creature will ramp you for the turn by two and leave two flying bodies behind. It's also worth noting that if you're running a couple bounce lands or other lands that produce more than one mana, these types of creatures can ramp you even more. Now to move into some non-creature forms of ramp. First up we have Growing Rites of Illumok, which comes down as an enchantment that lets us look at the top four of our library and put a creature card from among them into our hand. And then at our end step, if we have four more creatures, it turns into a Gaius Cradle essentially. Then of course we have Soul Ring, a format staple, which needs no explanation. And then we have three ramp spells with Cultivate, Farseek, and Nature's Lore. There are other options here, but I like Farseek and Nature's Lore because they can find dual lands. Now to talk about some spells that let us interact with our opponents and take out some of their stuff. To start out, we have the new Druid of Purification and Reclamation Sage. Druid of Purification is unfortunately a human, so we will never get a copy of it with Volo, but its ability is too powerful not to add to this deck in my opinion, and will often take out more than one of our opponent's problematic artifacts and enchantments anyways. Then, Rex Sage lets us blow up one of our opponent's enchantments or artifacts. Next up, we have Amphen Mutineer and Acidic Ooze. Amphen Mutineer exiles a creature and replaces it with a 4-3 Salamander token, and then Acidic Ooze lets us blow up an artifact, enchantment, or land, and has a relevant 2-2 Death Touch body. Next we have Trigon Predator and Kogla the Titan Ape. Trigon Predator blows up an artifact or enchantment whenever it deals combat damage to an opponent. Then Kogla fights something when it enters the battlefield and blows up an artifact or enchantment when it deals combat damage to a player. And it has the added utility of returning a human to our hand, aka Volo, to give it indestructible. So it can be used to save us from paying his commander tax if he would be destroyed in a situation. It should be noted though that since Kogla is a legendary creature, we won't be able to double up on his body or effects because the token would have to go to the grave before the fight trigger result. And now for the non-creature removal spells to round out this category. First off, we have Beast Within and Reality Shift for some instant speed single target removal spells. And finally, we have two board wipes with Azuri's Predation and Perplexing Test. Azuri's Predation makes a bunch of 4 force to fight our opponent's creatures and will often leave us with a few or more left over. And then Perplexing Test lets us return all token creatures or non-token creatures to their owner's hand. Since our deck can create a lot of token copies of our creatures, this spell will often be a budget version of Cyclonic Rift for 2 less mana when we choose to return non-token creatures and then we can play our creatures again for more value with their ETB effects. This category is just going to cover all the other spells in the deck that didn't fall into the draw, ramp, and removal categories. So first up, we have three creatures that produce a lot of tokens with Avenger of Zendikar, Hornet Queen, and Rampaging Baloths. Then we have Green Warden of Murasa, which returns a card from our graveyard when it enters the battlefield and another one when it dies. Next up we have Mind Flayer and Junk Winder. Mind Flayer lets us steal one of our opponent's creatures until Mind Flayer leaves the battlefield, and then Junk Winder costs one less for each token we control and taps down our opponent's non-land permanents whenever a token enters the battlefield. Then we have Wandering Archaic slash Explore the Vastlands, which you will almost always be playing as Wandering Archaic because it lets us copy our opponent's instants and sorceries if they don't pay a 2 mana tax for each. Next up we have two spells that let us double up our commander's ability with Adric and Nev Twin Casters and Twinning Staff. 
Then we have two big creatures that can be used to pump our whole team with Enraise Forerunners and Blossoming Bog Beast. Now for our non-creature utility spells. First up we have Simic Charm, Rapid Vigor, and Heroic Intervention. Creature based strategies are often very susceptible to board wipes and removal, so having spells like these can help protect our army and ensure we have some sort of board at every stage in the game. Next up we have Combined Chrysalis, which gives all of our token creatures flying, which can be great at getting damage through to our opponents. Then we have Vivian Champion of the Wild that has the static ability that lets us play our creatures at instant speed and also has the utility to give a creature Vigilance and Reach or exile one of our top three and play it if it's a creature card. And finally we have Lightning Greaves which is a cheap and easy way to give one of our creatures haste and protection and can be switched around for no mana investment. Volo is a very unique commander in the Creatures Matter strategy because he wants you to run creatures that don't have matching types, which really adds a level of deck construction difficulty as most of the powerful creatures in these colors share types. It was really fun looking up the more obscure creatures that have abilities close to what I wanted to play without the common or overlapping creature types. And even though some of these creatures might not be considered optimal in normal situations, when you're getting two copies of them due to Volo's ability, they still provide a lot of value throughout a game. Plus, Commander is a format where we can play the more obscure and underplayed cards throughout Magic's history and still make them work. So I hope you all enjoyed this deck tech and comment down below what cool or crazy creatures you would put in your build. And hit the subscribe and bell icon so you catch all of my other upcoming deck techs. Thanks for watching and have a good one.